God for renewed mercy. Renewed mercy. Hallelujah. With your hands lifted up all over the world. All over the world. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for renewed mercies. Thank you for yet another opportunity to receive of you direction, insight, revelation, to see clearly, to have a sense of direction, to make sense of the reason for my being, to fulfill your mandate on my life. Thank you, Father. Now let your word come forth unhindered with clarity, with precision in the name of Jesus. Breaking every resistance, interference, opposition in the air, in the atmosphere, on land, on water. We break it now in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Just break every resistance and opposition. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. It's good to be with you. And once again, thanks for coming. And you that are at home, wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice this blessed Sunday morning, the 8th of November, I thank God for you. And we are still on the subject of the man after God's own heart. David, one of the greatest kings of all times of the nation of Israel. How he became a man after God's own heart. And how God chose him and set us apart special messages with his name on it, known as the sure message of David. Then God said that if my covenant with the day and the night cannot be broken, then let not my covenant with my servant David be broken, Jeremiah 33 and the 20th verse. And one of the things I saw about, about King David, there were so many things about King David that I just can't let go when I reflect on the man, David. And one of the outstanding things about David, apart from the fact that he was a skillful worshiper, a dangerous giver when he came to the things of God, he praised God at all times, irrespective in good times and in bad times. He always had an attitude. He always had the attitude of praise. He didn't complain. God glory and praise God was the fact that David was one that remembered he was one that remembered and it's something that I, I want to be like I want to be one who does not forget, one that remembers I was talking to Bishop Bodai this morning about certain individuals who were part of the journey of my salvation apart from Mrs. Raj, the Aqua Sisters, the Aqua Sisters. And I was just telling her, I said, I remember the Aqua Sisters. They were part of the journey of my salvation and they were the ones that led me to the Church of Pentecost where I found Bishop Nyaku and Elder Saki that helped me so dearly that up to today, I still call Bishop Nyaku my pastor. You know, and these are things we can't forget. We can't forget. It's very dangerous if you forget. And I was saying in the first service that when you don't remember, you don't, you will not appreciate where you are in life. And when you don't appreciate where you are in life, you 
you will eventually lose it. When you don't appreciate where you are in life, you don't value what you have. And if you don't value what you have, you will abuse it. So you end up losing it to another. Everything in life is about attitude. Attitude. God can bless you and favor you. But if you have a wrong attitude, you can miss it. You can lose it. And that is what people don't appreciate in life. God can give you a good word, like King Saul. God had good plans for Saul. But Saul lost the throne as king of, over Israel. And God gave it to David because Saul had a bad attitude. He had an attitude of entitlement. He had an attitude of, I deserve it. But none of us deserve anything. Nobody deserves anything. It is by grace. I am what I am by the grace of God. It is not to him that runs, nor to him that will it, but God that showeth mercy. You are who you are by grace. You are where you are by grace. So learn to be gracious. It's by God's mercies that we are not consumed. So be merciful. Come with me to our anchor scripture. Hebrews the 6th chapter and the 10th verse. Hebrews the 6th chapter and the 10th verse. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. So here we see that God is not unrighteous. He's not unrighteous to forget our work. Work, the labor of love. So it takes work. And it takes the labor of love to even do the things that God requires of us. Because sometimes if you don't work at it and you don't labor in love, you can fall into that situation of thinking that you deserve it. That you don't owe God anything and you don't owe anybody anything. It's not true. It's not true. Nobody is entitled to anything. Nobody in this life. What have you that you did not receive it? Why then do you act as if you did not receive it? You are not entitled to anything. Neither am I. It's a privilege. I told them in the first service. And I said, sisters, before you became a madam and a missus, you were a single sister. You were not married. You cried and prayed and believed God. Now you are a madam and you are a missus. And you are trying to sit on the head of your husband. You want to sit on his head. Eh? Adalia. What is wrong with you? You have forgotten that once upon a time, you were a single woman. And you don't treat other singles well and nice at all. Because you are a missus, you are a madam. You have this sense of entitlement. It is not an entitlement. It is not a right to be a wife. It is a privilege. It's a privilege. So remember that. It will humble you. And you need humility to maintain your marriage. You need a good attitude. And Mr. Right, Mr. Goody. Today you, you have forgotten that, that once upon a time, the sisters despised you and they snubbed you. And no sister liked you and was interested in you. Until that sister liked you and married you. Today you become hot on the market. And all the sisters are falling for you like mosquitoes. Remember that you, once upon a time, no woman liked you and was interested in you. So today if you are one, have a good attitude and stop misbehaving. Nobody is entitled to anything. This attitude of people thinking... That I mean, somebody said the other day, do I, do I have to thank you? Do I have to thank you? God used you to bless me. Why, why are you talking about it? Hey! That is a bad attitude. And it can cut you in life. There are serious consequences for forgetting. For forgetting. Let's go ahead. Let's look at Romans 12 and 3. Romans 12 and 3. 
For I say, through the grace given unto me, uh -huh. to every man that is among you, not to, to think, every man, to every man, woman, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. You see, not to think of themselves more highly than they ought to think. Sometimes the blessing of life, achievements, prosperity, opportunities in life, success, relevance, can make you think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. We must walk gently, humbly. Very important. Because if you are not careful, you will think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. You will think you are entitled to things. You are not entitled to anything. I'm telling you. It is only by grace. And that's why Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. And that was David. He remembered from whence he came from. He never took for granted the grace of God. He never felt he was entitled to anything. I'll show you. I'll prove it to you. Well, every now and then, he will even question himself. And God has said, why have you favored me that much? Why am I better than others? It's favor. It's only by favor. Deuteronomy 15, 15. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt. And the Lord thy God redeemed thee. Therefore I command thee this thing today. You see, he said, remember that once upon a time you were a slave. Once upon a time. You were in bondage. You were a servant. Once upon a time you lacked. Once upon a time you struggled. Once upon a time you were nobody. You were nothing. Don't forget that. Remember. Because there is the tendency of us forgetting. And present circumstances what you have become, what you have achieved, your connections, your influence. And people can blow your mind and make you feel like you are the only biggest thing in town. It's not true. I tell my children, don't trust and don't believe the praises of men. For the same people who said to Jesus, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna to the son of David were the same people who said, crucify him. Crucify him. Don't let people who didn't know you when you were in bondage. When you were a slave in Egypt, don't let them fool you by singing your praises and telling you you are the best. You are not. You are nothing you are only who you are by the grace of God. Don't take credit. Don't say, I'm very ordered. I'm very disciplined. Uh, I, I'm very organized and I work very hard. So what? There are people who work harder than you, discipline more than you, exercise more than you, do things you can't even attempt to do. And yet, God has favored you. You are better off in many ways than them. Don't forget from whence you've come from. Deuteronomy 16 and 12. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and thou shalt observe and do these statutes. Again, he said, remember again. This is God speaking. Different times to remind us again. Yeah, to remind us. He said, you shall remember. Don't forget from whence you have come from. Forget where you've come from. Some people don't want anybody to know where they've come from. They don't want to talk about their past. They don't want to be reminded of where they've came from. There are people who despise their fathers. They despise their mother. They despise loved ones and friends and family because they have arrived. They made it. The 
when they look at their mother, their father, their brothers, sisters, siblings, and even their man of God or woman of God, they don't resemble them. They feel embarrassed to call your father, your father, your mother, your mother, because your mother or the father didn't go to school. But they use all they have to send you to the best of school. Today you have arrived, you are a CEO. You are a great man of God. You are a politician. You are this, you are that. And you despise your father, your mother. And the people who help you to bring you that far. You don't want to associate yourself with them. You disassociate yourself from them. You don't want anybody to know that you ever had anything to do with them. There are serious consequences for that. When you forget and despise those who helped you in your journey, you invite a curse on yourself. And especially if you have kids, you have to be very careful if you have children. Because sometimes God can allow the curse to go past you to the next generation is a very very painful thing and a serious thing so you have to always take heed to yourself to where you are today by not forgetting where you have come from you came from somewhere you can't forget your father you can't forget your mom and you can't forget your prophet your man of God your woman of God and the vessels that God used in this life to help you after the first service somebody was telling me how she used to borrow a shoe and the dress of a friend to come to church and today she has so much and I said to her remember that friend remember that friend and there are a lot of us here like that once upon a time the shoe you were wearing was not yours the dress even to your underwear you used to borrow it I know you're an angel. I'm not, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the person next to you, not you. It doesn't apply to you. It's always like that. It applies to somebody, but not you. But just hear it. Because it will save your life. Deuteronomy 24, 18. But thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee thence. Therefore I command thee to do this thing. You see? The word command, command. He said, remember and then command. Remember and then command. It's a very powerful word. Remember. Why remember? Because you can forget. Why remember? Because you have forgotten. You see, when you don't remember, you become unrighteous. And that word unrighteous means you become desensitized, insensitive, cruel, mean, cold-hearted, no conscience, without conscience, having no feelings and compassion for anyone self-centered selfish greedy it's always about you you don't care about others you don't care about anyone but yourself i've called for prayer from now to the end of the year that every monday tuesday and wednesday for the rest of the year we will gather and pray 7 p.m. each day for this country, for nations, and pray and fast for those who can for a divine outcome for our election that God will deliver this country from any unrest, from civil unrest, and from any kind of danger. And there are some that don't come to prayer meeting. They'll never come for a prayer meeting. No, 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 no. They are bigger than prayer meeting. They have arrived. You know, they are very busy. They are so important that prayer meeting. No, no, no. I don't go to prayer meeting. But these were people who were at every prayer meeting. They were, they were always at the altar. You can't even sack them from the altar. You have to get security to move them from the altar. Today they don't even come close to the altar because they are busy. They have arrived. Things are working for them, your lot or your lines are falling on pleasant places. So you don't have time for church. And even when they come to church, they don't even wait after service. They have to leave immediately because I have an appointment. I have an appointment. I'm picking somebody up at the airport. I have a VIP. Hey. You. You've forgotten that you used to be a slave. 
You've forgotten that you've been bondage that you used to lack and want. Today, you despise others. Critical of the mistakes and the sins and the fault of others. Showing no compassion and no mercy. If you have received mercy, be merciful. If you have come that far by grace, be gracious. Deuteronomy 24, 22. And thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command thee to do this thing. You see? He's reminding us again. You were a slave. You were in bondage. I'm commanding you. It's a, it's a command for you to remember and do what is right. Do what is right. Psalm 78 verse 41 to 42. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. You see, how do you tempt God? You provoke him. How do you do that? When you forget. When you forget the wonders of old. When you forget the works of his mighty hand. May we not forget like others did and fell in the wilderness and many fell by the sword of their enemies because they forgot and took for granted the works of old and the doing of Jehovah. I pray that that will not be your lot and portion in life. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead quickly. The scripture speaks for themselves. Amen. That you don't think more highly of yourself. You ought to. I think we should finish that scripture. We didn't finish it. Romans 12 and 3. For I say through the grace given unto me. To every man that is among you. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly. According as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. The measure of faith. Soberly, be sober and vigilant, be sober minded, soberly minded, not walking in clouds, nigh, despising everybody, looking down on everybody because of your present status. Time changes, position change. I'm telling you, the grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Whenever you are blessed, remember. Remember those who helped you. Remember those who were there for you before you became who you are today. In the journey of life, there will always be someone who helped you along the way. You must never forget them. Remember. You must remember where you have come from. People who don't remember are amateurs and are very dangerous people. First Chronicles 16, 12 and 11. Sixteen. It's on the screen. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. It's also again, remember, it's all about being one that remembers where you've come from and what God has done. First Samuel 18, 18. And David said unto Saul, Who am I and what is my life? or my father's family in Israel, that I should be the son-in-law to the king. You see, very, very, very sober attitude. Sober attitude. That even for the family he married into, he looked at himself and said, I don't deserve to be married to the daughter of the king. Yeah. He was very sober about it. And it's, it's very powerful that he didn't say, well, you know, 
uh, my family, my father and my mother and my house. People take credit and give credit to the family they come from, who their father or their mother is, and refuse to give God the credit and have an attitude of entitlement that I deserve to be who I am. Nobody deserves to be anything. And when you have that kind of mentality that I don't deserve it, and yet I'm blessed because God favored me, it guarantees longevity. It will take you far in life. But if you are the kind that thinks you are entitled to things and you let it get into your head, you mistreat and mishandle people and displease God. And sometimes God can wish for you to have this and have that and have that. And a bad attitude can cause you to forfeit it. Because God intended for Saul to stay on the throne for a long time. And his attitude sabotaged him. And the prophet Samuel came and said, God said, I would have established your throne. And even let your children succeed you. But because of this bad attitude, you have forfeited. And I've given it to David and the house of David. Your own attitude can cause you to lose. So sometimes it's not about prophecy or who prophesied what. It's your attitude. You can forfeit things. You can miss it in life. When you have a wrong or a bad attitude. When you have a sense of entitlement and think you are entitled to something, it can go to another because your attitude is wrong. Second Samuel 16, 21. And David said unto Michal, It was before the Lord which chose me before thy father and before all his house. To appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. Here was David dancing before the Lord as a king, rent his royal garment. The wife Micah, because she was the daughter of a king, understood protocols and the way of the, the kings, the way of the palace and royalty. She was very upset with him. That you don't do this. You are king. You must understand the protocols. And David said to her, you know something? Let me remind you. I understand what you're saying. I wasn't doing what I did to please man. I was dancing before the Lord who chose me before your father and your father's house. And made me ruler over Israel. And I'll do it again. The motive was about pleasing God and praising God and not trying to prove any point to man. And that all of us must learn. He praised him. He danced before the Lord. Do you dance before God? And when you do the things you do for God, you must always check your motive. Second Samuel, chapter 7, verse 18. Then when King David in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me hither to? You see? So here was David. He counted his blessings, took stock of his life, looked all around him, saw the achievements, the greatness, the accolades, the excellency, the influence. And he said, God, who am I? What am I? Who am I? And what is my father's house? That you brought me that far. That you favored me. That is one of the things that made him a man after God's own heart. That he never took credit for anything. Didn't give credit to his father's house. Or himself. Though he was a skillful worshiper. And all the things he had going for him. Never took credit for anything. Always had this attitude and mentality, I am not entitled to anything. And God said, you the man. You are the kind of person I want. Who never take credit. 
for what I do for them. Who will not touch my glory or my praise. Dolaki fasu palahadis. Molagadali gisiko tulahadabasis. Until you come to a place where the praises of men and the accolades and recognitions of men means nothing to you, you are still wandering in the darkness. You haven't seen the light yet. The day you come to that place where what people think of you and how people perceive you don't matter anymore, then you have begun your journey. <laughs> Jesus Jesus Psalm 77 verse 11 and 12 I will remember the works of the Lord mm. surely I will remember thy wonders of old mm. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings yes 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 I'll talk about it I won't hide it I was telling them in the first service I remember when I was young, we used to live in a place in Atwa. I should have been there this weekend with Justice Kolendi, honoring and laying the mother's remain to rest today. And when he became Justice, I was calling him my Lord. The other day, said, No, 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 Papa, you can't call me my Lord, please. I beg you, Papa. Don't take me that far. Just call me Justice, please. I beg you. My Lord, no. No. And it means a lot. And Burying the mother, did that yesterday and honored the memory of the mom. And I remember I used to live at one, at a place called Wapani. There were one bedroom and a hall, and we all, all of the kids, six of us, between the one bedroom and the hall. And remember, it used to leak, so when it rains, the water came in there, and we have to put buckets and everything to try and save the situation. Very embarrassing. I remember that. And somebody said, why do you have to say things like that? I'm talking about it. I want to remember something. Yeah. You, you are okay. You, you were born in Buckingham Palace. Thank you. It's good for you. Stay there. Born in Buckingham Palace. I wasn't born in Buckingham Palace. One of the prophets said, he said, my father was not a prophet. Neither was I born a prophet, but the Lord made me a prophet. My father was not an archbishop nor a bishop. Neither was I born a bishop or an archbishop, but the Lord made me an archbishop, and I am grateful. I'm so ever grateful. Sing that song. How grateful are you? I'm forever grateful for the Yusuf Masadas. 
Amen. Psalm 1, 43, verse 5. I remember the days of old. Yeah. I meditate on all thy works. Uh -huh. I muse on the work of thy hands. I remember the days of old. That's what I'm talking about when I live in Wah. And when it rains, the whole house was leaking. We have to pack, you know, containers everywhere, buckets. Mm. <laughs> remember, remember, remember where you have come from. Because you see, when you remember, eh, your attitude towards people is always different. I'm telling you. You will treat people even when they are wrong. And when you are right, you will treat them carefully, graciously. I'm telling you. But when you forget, sometimes when I hear people say, do you know who I am? I will show you where power lies. You will do what? You will do what? Show me where power lies. You. A man born of a woman. A common mosquito bite can finish you in few days and you have the audacity to tell me I will show you where power do you know where power lies once we have heard twice we've been told that power belongs to God how dare you threaten another human being's life you will show who I will show you do you know who I am who are you you are like the grass that withered you are like the flower that faded. I know you have deep pocket. I know you have secured yourself. But have you secured your eternity? Is your eternity with God secured? Time changes. Time changes. A billionaire, well connected everywhere, was put in prison and he took his life. He hung himself in prison. The billions, the private islands and private jets, the palaces across the nations could not save him. There come a time when money fails. A very wealthy man living in a community with a poor neighbor. And this important VIP in the society came, had dinner with them and whilst they were eating and the champagne was flowing all over the place, the VIP requested for salt. And the wife ran to the kitchen, there was no salt, and had to send to the neighbor for salt. <laughs> when I heard it, I laughed, I said, yes sir, yes sir, somebody said, yes sir, yes sir. Uh -huh, that is God, that is God, in, that is God in action. Yeah. They have money, but they couldn't buy the salt. And they had to go to the poor neighbor for salt. 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 Yeah. As common as salt is, there come a time when your money can go to town to buy the salt and you need the poor neighbor's salt. you can approach that poor neighbor in the time of need for salt has a lot to do with how you treat them. Because if you didn't treat them well, you will even, and you are very, and you know people are very proud, very, very proud. They will choose to be embarrassed and say, well, I'm sorry, we don't have salt. Eat the food like that. Why? Because they didn't treat their neighbor right. So they feel ashamed and embarrassed. May you never come to a place in life where you feel ashamed and embarrassed to talk to another human being. It all has to do with attitude. Amen. Psalm 119 verse 164. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. Yeah, seven times a day I'll praise you. I'll show gratitude. Luke 7 and 47. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, 
for she loved much but to whom little is given the same loveth little yeah if you are forgiven of little you love little if you are forgiven of much you love much so let's look at some of the things you must remember in life i talked about your father your mother and where you have come from then Hosea 12 13 never forget your man of God your prophet or the vessels that God used to help you to bless you to make it possible for you to come that far don't forget them remember them they might mean they might be nothing or mean nothing to you but remember but for them you won't be here but for them you will not be here don't despise them don't look down on them don't mistreat them don't mishandle them and one of the people you must never mishandle disrespect or mistreat in your life when you have made it is your prophet or your man of God as much as there might be a lot of issues and problems with prophet there are still genuine prophet and a prophet here can be your pastor your teacher your man of God your woman of God the one that was used by God to bring you out of bondage and guided you through the wilderness of Sinai and brought you to the promised land you will need them I'll show you something next week about the Shunammite woman how the the Lord used the prophet to provide her a miracle and how she needed the prophet to keep and preserve that miracle Hosea 12:13. And by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. You see? So, God uses people to bring us out. It's not by accident that you are in this house. There's a reason why God planted you here. I know you are a mogul, you are blessed, you are huge, you are this, you are that. But there's a reason why God planted you here. And you must never forget it. You must never forget why God put you where you are. You must never forget why you were born in a particular family. Why your father is your father, your mother is your mother. God is wiser than you. Stop trying to be smart. And stop trying to be smarter than God. He's smarter and better than you. He alone knows why. So be thankful. And be sober. Stop being too smart and being wise. Mm -hmm. Look at Psalm 44, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 44, 1 to 3. We have heard with our ears, mm -hmm. O God. Our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days. You see, this is the problem with this generation. This generation have a very serious problem. And let me tell you what the problem is. The fathers fail to tell their children of the works of old. Our fathers have told us we have heard with our ears and that's why I always tell my children where I've come from that never take for granted what I do for you because you don't deserve anything it's only by mercy and grace it's only God that had favored me and I do all that I do not because I have deep pockets but it's because I care we live in a society where whenever you show kindness and you care, it's misunderstood to be arrogance or that you have and you are displaying or trying to show. It's not about showing off. It's a very hypocritical society where everybody hides and nobody stands up to do right or good because you you'll be misunderstood. Oh, be big it way, be don't want to be seen, don't want to be known but we rather prefer to be seen and known in the courts of men and, the, and of the enemy and not in the courts of God but our fathers have told us our fathers have told us they've told us where they came from the wonders you did across the wilderness of Sinai how you brought them through the Red Seas and how you smote their enemies in the Red Sea. And parted the Red Sea and brought them through a dry land. And how you went before them and guided them with a pillar of 
cloud by day and by the pillar of fire by night you smote their enemies you destroyed the nations that were before them you made them powerful you gave them victory and the upper hand over their enemies our fathers have told us what did your father tell you what has your father and your mother told you of the wonders of God so we have a generation that does not know anything about the ways of God and the wonders of old and where their parents have come from. I want my children to know where I have come from. That they may have no sense of entitlement of anything in life. None of you deserve anything. It's by grace. It's a privilege and it is not a right to Gazi Gadalahasis. None of us are entitled to anything but grace. Grace and grace alone. Please go on. How thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand. And it was God them. who drove the enemies before us with his mighty hand. Go on. And planted them. How thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. You afflicted our enemies and cast them out. Go on. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. It wasn't by their own skill or might or power. For it is not by might nor by power. But by my spirit says the Lord. Somebody put your hands together and say yes. Yes, 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 yes. And say thank you, thank you. Say thank you, thank you. Thank you Lord. Thank you. I'm grateful. Today you sit in a beautiful home. You build houses and palaces with granite yeah, and marbles. It's good. It's good. But don't forget that you weren't born in a palace. Neither were you born in a house of granite or marbles. Remember that some of you were born in mad houses. Today you live in the best area of the city don't forget where you have come when you pass by a poor community and you see beggars on the road and they come by your car even if you don't want to give them anything don't just treat them anyway anyhow because once upon a time, you were also a beggar. But you were a dignitary, a dignified beggar. There are beggars like that, very dignified beggars. They beg, but very, very dignified. They wear suits, smell well, and they beg. Neither did their own arms save them. He said it wasn't by their own arms that saved them. Go ahead. But thy right hand and thine arm uh -huh. and the light of thy countenance, uh -huh. because thou hast a favor because unto them. thou had favor. Because on thou had favor. On because thou had favor. On Somebody say favor. Come on, put your hands together and thank God for favor. Thank Him for favor. 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 That is what it is. Favor. More favor than others. More favor than others. Still married. Favor. Others have lost it. You have it together. Favor. Some are widows. You are not. Favor. Go taki sahas. Lift up your hands. Talk to God for one minute. I just feel something in the spirit. Everybody just talk to God in other tongues right now. Just pray. Wherever you are at home, everywhere, just pray in the spirit for a few minutes. The kusuba katistasis. Le kofoko ti farahati has, le karanda hati zandu sitis, le agudu sis, si kayanda busita. We break it, we break it, we break the assignment, we break the agenda, we break every secret hidden agenda of the enemy, on any loved one, on any son or daughter of your people or of this house, home and abroad, wherever they are, we shield them. We rescue them. 
miracles the lady kata bahasi makaya tu zumba apadina mukutula mahada gasis name of jesus amen put your hands together please give god praise i have to stop my time is up we'll continue next week sunday but please remember and never think of yourself more highly than you ought to think and never be fooled or deceived by people around you or by anybody that you are entitled to anything don't come to the place where you believe that you are the best you are the only one without you no no not true it's only god and god alone who is entitled to anything and to everything none of us are it's favor you are favored a favor thank god jesus said to the rich poor man the rich young man sell everything you have give it to the poor and the gospels you have but just in heaven the things we have on earth is given to us to use it to acquire treasures in heaven not to use it on ourselves Are you clapping? Second Samuel chapter 9 verse 1. Second Samuel chapter 9 verse 1. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Again. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake you see here was David the house of Saul Saul was his arch enemy Saul went after David and attempted assassination 24 times on the life of David and yet David when he had made it remembered that the same arch enemy Saul had a son by the name of Jonathan who saved his life and did him good without which he would have died and wouldn't have become who he became and he said is there any one left in the house of my arch enemy for the sake of Jonathan the son of my arch enemy that I might show kindness kindness me to do something for them it's not enough to remember and do nothing whenever God remembers he did something he does something and God remembered Noah and favor came and he caused the rain to cease and God remembered Abraham Isaac and of Jacob and delivered the children of Israel and God remembered Anna and immediately she had a child when God remembers he does something David said because I have remembered because I have remembered I want to show kindness I want to do something when we remember it is required of us to do something and it is unrighteous when we just talk and we don't act and we don't do something for the cause of God 1 Corinthians 11 and 2 and I want to stop here for now now I commend you because you remember me in everything and maintain the traditions even as I delivered them to you. That's the English standard version. Yeah. Here was Paul, a man of God, saying, I commend you. You must get to a place where leadership can commend you. Commendable. Are you commendable? He said, I commend you. Why? Because you remembered me in everything, in everything. You remembered me. There are people who don't remember anything. And they don't remember the amount of God. They get to a place where they have arrived. And they forget being what God requires of them. They forget in following the traditions that they were used to. They now begin to make rules and laws 
to determine their relationship with God and their man of God themselves because of where you have come to. Don't do that. It's dangerous. There are serious consequences. Don't do that. Stay humble. Be sober. Keep doing the right thing. No matter how huge and big you become, it will give you longevity. Please stand. Are you clapping? Hallelujah. My friend, he's been on that in that Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest thing but I feel safe and at home and that is going to happen we are consecrating about 30 bishops this time around and, and trusting churches to each one of them for them to develop those churches um, it's going to be a very powerful thing we have about eight women being consecrated as bishops among them It's time for the women and the daughters to rise to the occasion and take their place. And I'm very, very proud of them. Uh, some I've known for 20 years, some 30, some 38 years and plus, and they will surprise the men. I'm very confident of that. Yeah. Very, very surprised. Very, very confident of that. And so we are counting on your prayers and your support. 
and your generosity. Please don't wait for too long. We have 21 days. Things are already in motion. We're working around the clock to ensure that we do all that is required to create an atmosphere conducive for divine visitation and for a move of God. Please receive Bishop. <laughs>